Over here. Over. And I thought he was yanking my chain. Yanking your what? Your boss said you'd be here earlier. My boss? Your boss, Eberhard. I don't know him. Damn it! Sorry, don't mind me. I am Ferenc Waller. I used to be a cardiac uh, heart surgeon. I'm Aiden, but who is Eberhard? At this point, I'm not sure anymore. Some guy I met said <coughs> he'd arranged to recover a pacemaker from the medical offices in the, in the quarantine building for me. Did you pay him in advance? I did. <coughs> that wasn't too smart. Oh, well. I guess I'll just go after the pacemaker myself. I promised my wife I would get it. And I intend to keep my word. <laughs> Wait, what is a pacemaker? It's a little shock box. To simulate the heartbeat and to keep it beating. For those suffering from damaged hearts, it was the only way to lead a normal life. They're pretty rare nowadays. <coughs> How do you know it's there? I consulted there back in the day. So I know where they keep equipment like this. Where, exactly? Are you offering to go for me? Eh, why not? If I can help. Besides, you promised your wife, right? Excellent. The medical equipment room's on the third floor. But it's dangerous in there right now. I'll wait until tonight when the infected leave the building. They'll find shelter around here for now. I'll be at the windmill. Good luck, Aiden. Oh, my God. 
Found your pacemaker. Thank you. Now I need to arrange for surgery. I hope you can, and that your wife will be okay. My wife? Oh, I buried her last year. Natural causes. Nothing heart-related. I'm the one with the faulty ticker. <coughs> and it's running down more and more every month. Monica made me swear to take care of myself. I've been helping others all my life. The time has come to help myself. Okay, but who's gonna implant the pacemaker? I'll figure that out soon enough. First step was to get a hold of a pacemaker. Now what? Continue the race against time, I guess. I can't be the only heart surgeon left in the world. I hope you find one, Doctor. And soon. Thank you, Aiden. Take care. We have something in common. But there's also one big difference between us. Were you a pilgrim? I know, a female pilgrim. There weren't many of us. But that's why I was so good at it. No one would recognize me as a pilgrim. Some men thought that as a woman, it would be easier to deceive me. Rob me. My fast reflexes and sharp dagger taught them otherwise. How'd you end up in Villador? I got this goddamn job. A guy wanted me to deliver a package to Villador. To some woman who was well known before the outbreak. Apparently she played video games. Professionally? Weird job, eh? Anyway, the guy paid me a lot, but on one condition. I couldn't know what was in the package. And that was my big mistake. I carried this damn thing for 50 kilometers, and with each step it got heavier. I sneaked into Villador, found this woman, and delivered the package. She opened it in front of me. Turned out, it was a jar, with a human head inside. Whose head? I don't really know. I got the fuck out of there right quick. Is that why you quit the life? Well, I felt that, actually, that I was constantly running away from something. Maybe from myself. This is a big city. Even a pilgrim can belong here. Nobody judges you for what you were before, like they do in the smaller towns. Who you used to be beyond the walls. What you once did. They kept you on the move. You can disappear in the city. That's how I found my place. And what about you, Aiden? Don't you want to stop running? Yeah, maybe someday, but first, I have to finish what I started here. I understand. Just remember this. You can't run away from yourself. Good luck, Pilgrim. Welcome, stranger. What is this place? I concoct and sell everything, from healing elixirs to powerful wards against the infected. Ah, uh, snake oil, then. You will address the bubble with respect. Oh, will I? Don't mind Corvus. He is, uh, overprotective. Tell me more about your so-called elixirs. By the looks of what's in these jars, someone's been scavenging graveyards. They are talking about my ingredients, both rare and potent. I combine them to create wonders. Some 
emit a scent that can cause an infected to come running, no matter what lies in its path. Others, pheromones that can cause most infected to flee madly. And still others grant fists of fire that will burn an opponent with each blow. Well, theatrics aside, I'm intrigued. Uh, tell me about your healing elixirs. I sell anything, from salves for the gravest wounds to potions that cure illness and disease. A young man like you might wish to try my virility boosting. Uh, pass. I have my doubts, but I'm willing to try some of these items. I'm sure you'll be delighted. My elixirs are worth every coin. And they're derived from monsters? In part, yes. Some unusual mutations in rare creatures produce hormones with special properties. When I combine them with the right herbs and other compounds, I can create both powerful weapons and healing items. As it happens, I am running out of some key ingredients and could use some help, if you are willing to do some hunting for me. Why don't you send this guy? I am no errand boy. Hosh Garbus. This is why we're running low on ingredients and customers. You keep scaring people away. I'm not scared of monsters. Or your boy here. It's settled then. If you can hunt, I'll buy what you bring me. You stand to profit handsomely. What do you need? First, the brain of the rare demolisher. It contains a special enzyme. But how would you even know about that? The answer to that question might well drive even a man as strong and resilient as you. Stark, raving mod. Right. Whatever. Where is it? A demolisher considerably larger than others of its ilk has been sighted in the park. Quite near. Bring me its head and I'll pay you well. One demolisher head. Coming up.
found the creature. The reports were accurate. God, that was one big mother. The specimen will produce a great deal of enzyme. Wait, that does what again? Don't question the Baba. You need only be concerned about your pay. Fair enough. I'm no doctor anyway. Fine then. Here is your compensation. To your next successful haunt. What can I get for you, Baba? I have a very large order to fulfill. The supply division needs a stockpile of medicine. To do this, I need you to trap several infected at the same time. I trap, not kill? <laughs> How do I do that? Hi. They're our setup, so let me explain. At the locations, you'll find jury-rigged shipping container. 
All you gotta do is lure the biters into the container. When you got all of them in there, get out before they nail your ass. On your way out, slam the lever, and gravity will do the rest. The doors will drop on either side, trapping the buggers inside. Sounds dangerous. Wait, why am I doing this if you set up the traps? Cause we got bigger fish to fry. And the Bobby here says you're more than capable. Don't worry, we'll be doing our part. If you did your part right, you'll see some gas coming out the top of the trap. That's released when the door's shut, sending our little babies into dreamland. If they dream anymore. How am I supposed to harvest samples if they're trapped inside? That's where we come in. Once the critters are trapped, your job's over. We'll come in later, harvest what's needed, and deliver it to the Baba ourselves. All right. I can work with that. Great. This much medicine is gonna save a lot of lives. When a lot of lives need saving. The traps are set up on Lighthouse Island, Eden. Be safe. That's the plan. I'm back from trapping the biters. How did it go? Now the traps are pretty clever. Excellent. They will come in handy when I have large batches of medicine to make. In the meantime, you did well. Here's your compensation. Any new requests? I've just run out of a key ingredient to soothe and repair serious burns. Sounds important. Quite. I need tissue from a bolter, but not any common bolter will do. Fortunately, one that suits my needs was sighted quite nearby. They tend to keep to the roofs, so watch your step. Got it. Wanted more? You've got more. Come see me at the guild ASAP.
Here are the tissue specimens you needed. In such fine condition. As if surgically removed. Eh, skinned plenty of animals during my time as a pilgrim. It shows. And now your well-deserved compensation. Running low on anything? Indeed. But one moment, please. No. Take that salve and rub it on your husband's arms under a full moon. His affliction should subside by the dawn of the second day. Thank you, Baba. Ooh, under a full moon? No offense, but that sounds like fairy tale bullshit. And being out at night is dangerous. Listen now. Hush, Corvus. A closed mind cannot be opened with threats of violence. Hey, it's not closed-minded to be concerned about people's safety. A full moon can be seen through a window. That is sufficient. Now do you want another hunt or not? A rare creature has been spotted. Bring me its spleen and its liver, and only the spleen and liver of this single creature. How will I recognize it? Don't worry. You will most certainly know it when you see it. Oh, and it won't be alone. Thank <laughs> you. 
Here are the organs you requested. Are you sure they are from the right creature? Uh, there was no mistake in that monster. But uh, you're the Baba. You tell me if I got it the right one. Yes, I can already tell. You did indeed. I was just curious to know if you'd come across another creature I've heard about. No matter. Here is your reward. I have no more hunts for you right now. You've done very well. And I hope to have more work for you soon. Thanks. So, um, what's with Corvus, anyway? You seem an odd pair. Corvus saved my life. He intervened during a violent robbery. He has been my protector ever since. Hmm. I see. Yeah, I heard. Apparently, she's left with time. Oh, the guy in hand out here. Thanks for this trip. All the time, me and the boys were breaking the lids after our. I have to say, Aiden, I haven't seen Albert this happy in forever. Thank you for what you're doing. Here's a list for your next book search. I've enjoyed our talks, but I tend to hog the conversation. Are there any questions you'd like to ask me? Well, actually, I am curious about something. Wonderful. What would you like to know? I get that you're romantic, but are you into subjects like science? An interesting question. Hopefully my answer will be worthy of it. You ask, though, as if they are entirely different ends of the spectrum. But to me, they are parallel notions. Whether it's science or romance, answers to questions are often best guesses based on what can be observed. With a different perspective, the same information leads to a different answer. For example, the sun was once a fiery god that with better observational tools, was revealed to be but a fiery ball of gas. How do you feel about science? Especially given its role in our current mess. Science is just a tool, like a hammer. You can use it to build a shelter or bury it in someone's skull. A vivid but effective example. Hopefully we'll see more shelters and fewer of the other. Hurry back so we can speak some more. Of course. I'm looking forward to it.
You're a miracle worker. You found them, then brought them back safely. Oh, ho, ho, ho. here now is one of the original great American novels, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Mark Twain was a wry observer of the human condition and a sharp-witted satirist. What would his take on the divisions of our society be, I wonder? Here we have what is known as the written Torah, an introduction, if you will, to the origin story of the Jewish people, and part of the larger concept of the Torah that includes all their teachings, culture, and practice. A crucial tome of religion and culture. Our collection is growing by leaps and bounds, <laughs> primarily due to your leaping and bounding. <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> you are a stoic, aren't you? Damn, <laughs> thought you'd have a better sense of humor than Thalia. <laughs> Oh, well. Aiden, it's such a wonderful day. Let's dispense with all this dreary philosophizing, shall we? <laughs> okay. I see you brought back the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Tell me, Aiden, as a pilgrim, are you an adventurer like Huckleberry Finn? Every day out there was an adventure, <laughs> I can tell you that. Not always a pleasant one, though. There was plenty of unpleasantness in Huckleberry Finn. In that case, call me Huck. And I'll be your Mary Jane. Tell me, Aiden. Do you have a thing for older women like Huck did? <laughs> Excuse me? Never mind. I am just glad you've retained your sense of humor in the face of this world's darkness. And don't ever think I take for granted the danger you surely encounter every day. Mm, the danger's out there, Thalia. Here with you. No reason not to relax. That's how I feel when you're around, Aiden. Thank you for that. I'll anxiously await your return. Before you go.
I like it when you walk through the door with more books. Let me see. Let me see. Hardly. Franz Kafka might have thrived in our city. He wrote tales that blended realism and fantasy, creating surreal environments and scenarios. Doesn't that sound familiar? <laughs> the Metamorphosis was all about a hideous transformation. Yes, he might have provided some brilliant insight into our current situation. Yes, you have preserved poetry. That's just what the city needs. Particularly the work of Pindar and his victory odes. They celebrate the triumphs of ancient athletes. And what is life today but a contest simply to survive? He was a firm believer in what man can achieve by the grace of the gods. Gods or no, I share his faith. I spoke about faith when we first met. Not only was that faith justified, you've now given me hope. Aiden. I've barely been able to focus, waiting for you to return. I see you brought Kafka's Metamorphosis. Albert's been after that particular book for a while. I'm sure Albert waxed poetic about the theme of transformation and its parallels to the state of our world. A lot of wax, actually. <laughs> Two earfuls, at least. <laughs> That's Albert. But I'm curious what you think. Is the protagonist's transformation into a giant cockroach an apt parallel for what's going on in our world? Uh, more or less. 
He turned into a roach. People can turn into infected. True. But Kafka's story was as much about feelings of alienation and isolation. Not just turning into a monster. Yeah. I <laughs> suppose you're right. I, I hadn't really thought of it that way. I see. I guess I was expecting more of your stealth insight. Uh, next time? I have to admit, Aiden. I was attracted to you when I first laid eyes on you. Physically, that's still true. And I do enjoy our talks. But honestly, it's not enough. Not yet. But there's still time. If it matters to you, I hope it does. See you next time. Hey, what are you doing here? None of your business. What do you want? I'm just looking for a book, not for any trouble. You see books, we see toilet paper. Find another library. I just came from one, and I can't let you rip those books to shreds. Can't let us? <laughs> Please. Get him, boys. Let's pick his corpse clean. More great works recovered. Your dedication to this is moving. <laughs> Gulliver's Travels. Jonathan Swift was a brilliant satirist. Here he had a go at human nature and the Traveler's Tales subgenre. <laughs> Magnificent. I fear our world has lost the ability to appreciate the subtlety of satire. But when it can again, this book will be here, thanks to you. Our library is growing, Aiden. Not just in the number of books, but in the amount of knowledge, wisdom, history, and more. We need to keep it growing, Aiden. Uh, but first, let us find some more collections for you. Stay on the line. It's on the menu today, Professor. Ah, just a few deliveries. A few or a lot. I'll take whatever. Good man. Carrier with a letter for you? Excellent, thank you. Oh, very interesting. This is not quite the news I expected, but welcome nonetheless. What's that, ma'am? Forgive me if I'm not at liberty to say. As a carrier, I'm sure you of all people understand the value of information. Yes, yeah, certainly. 
The Guild has its network, but we overseers, I would say we are more like spiders. We crisscross the city with our webs and take notice when we feel a tug on this thread or that. I see. I'm sure you do. And yes, we occasionally feed upon the poor flies caught in our web, but we're just as likely to give them a treat as well. To keep our web strong, of course. Of course. So, perhaps I won't share the tidbit that got caught on my web this time, but I will reward the fly who tugged on the thread and called it to my attention. Make sure my little fly is rewarded. And there's a little morsel for you as well. Carrier's Guild, here's a package for you. Oh my! I've been waiting for this. The new issue of Flickr Fanfare magazine. What's that? The best source for behind-the-scenes info on your favorite movies, their stars and directors. Oh look, it says here that Lana Kasdan has a new film coming out. And that Eggy Canvey's performance in the Quigley is a tour de force. Uh, what's a movie? <laughs> you know if you read Flickr fanfare, my friend. I used to read them slavishly when I was younger. I recently found someone with a complete collection. I pay him to send me an issue a month. I feel like I'm back in the old days when movies were being made and magazine subscriptions were in vogue. I see. Interesting. Forgive my pathetic nostalgia, but the arrival of these rags, and yes, they were rags even then, well, it takes me back. They're a monthly oasis from the pervasive drear around us. I can't argue with you there. So don't. Now, leave me. It says that Teddy Canterbury is having an affair with his leading lady, and he's married to a man. Oh, I swear the cat is just insatiable. Back in one piece, I see. Of course. Uh, here's a message I was given. I'll take care of that. Now get your arse back here soon. These messages aren't going to deliver themselves. <laughs> 